<laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I, li I like to talk about building capacity through the development of low-cost 3D printer we printed weather stations. So this project is um, supported by USAID and the National Weather Service to build capacity to reduce risk, weather-related weather risk in developing countries through observing and communicating weather and climate information to rural communities. So as most of you know, developing countries are some of the most data sparse regions in the world, as shown on the map on the right. Um, one of the reasons is commercial sensors are expensive and difficult to maintain in these areas. So our idea is to come up with a low cost solution to help with this problem. So this low cost solution is, is to use 3D printer technology and microsensors, which are relatively cheap these days to basically print and replace instruments as they fail and allow MET services to build their own instruments. So here's, here's a couple images of our, our first prototype of our, our weather station, our housing sensors and platform. This is all run on a, on a single board Raspberry Pi computer. And the total cost is on the order of, of two to $300, so, so not very expensive. So what are the components? So we have designed and built a, a wind speed sensor, wind direction, uh, precipitation gauge, and then the housing components for the Raspberry Pi and, and, and other parts of the station. We also have a radiation shield, and in there we have the microsensors for measuring um, pressure, temperature, and humidity. And the last step that we're currently working on is integrating solar power and uh, wireless communication so we can put these in remote areas around the world. So how do you make a 3D printed weather station? Well, first you need a, you need a 3D printer, uh, high quality plastic filament, and some kind of computer aid uh, drawing software, CAD software, to design, uh, design your um, instruments. So here's some of our, our designs that we've developed. So here's the design for the precipitation rain gauge, wind speed sensor, wind direction, the radiation shield, and then here's a finished product of the rain gauge funnel, which in a pinch can be used for other applications. So, <laughs> so we've done some initial comparisons, if you're wondering. Uh, so this is temperature and, and relative humidity uh, time series. Um, I think our measurements are, are doing pretty well, except for there is some solar, solar heating issues that's required us to redesign the radiation shield. So this is research and development. Um, good results from our pressure sensor. Um, we're pretty happy there. But we still have some work to do on our wind speed sensor, as you can see there. So it's not all, all perfect. And we're also evaluating our other, other sensors at the moment. So our, our, our initial project is focused in Zambia. Uh, part of the reason that there's a, already an ongoing early warning project uh, there. Um, and the idea is to extend our observation network and also develop and build new societal applications for that region. So we've partnered with the Zambia Met Service. We've done our initial, our, our initial evaluation site survey uh, last month. Um, our first deployment is planned for February of this coming year with a more extensive network plan for um, about August of next, next year and then start focusing on integration of these data into applications in year two. And the plan is um, to have this project over a five year period. And then hopefully we're gonna expand to other data sparse regions such as the Caribbean, Pacific Islands and other regions in Africa. <clears throat> so talking to the, the Zambia Med Service, uh, we've, we've, we wanna focus on some set applications early on, improving their flash flood early morning systems water resource management, especially for hydroelectric power. Um, we visited with local farmers for agriculture, for, for large-scale farming to substance farming. And also there's, there's uh, um, fish, fish farms there for ponds um, and also for health applications, such as looking for malaria, regions for malaria outbreaks. So, so I also think there's educational opportunities with this activity, so such as integrating this into an university course, say in atmospheric sciences, to help, them, help students learn how to use the instrumentation, monitor. But also, this could be an interdisciplinary course where you can bring in engineering students, computer science students to improve on our design, uh, integrate, help with the programming, display the data, and so on. So it could be a really, a really good course, I think, in, into the future. And there's other opportunities uh, that I can think of. One is you know, science activities in primary and secondary schools that can help build and design their own instruments. Weather enthusiasts who want their instruments in their backyard. And the great thing is that this is going to be an open resource in the future so people can download and build their own instruments. So with that, I just want to mention this project was inspired by Kelly Sponberg, who's, who's done a lot of work in this area over the years. And unfortunately, he, he passed away this uh, past August. So he'll be missed. So 
Thank you very much.